All right, so today I want to show you a couple more things. One is a tool and another is a window. And as you come over here, you guys worked with yesterday. Remember, anything on Illustrator or any Adobe product for that, for that matter that has that little triangle in the lower right-hand corner, if you click and hold, which my computer is lagging right now, sorry guys, if you click and hold, you actually have more than one option waiting for you underneath there. So we worked with our blob brush yesterday, but as you can tell, there's a regular paintbrush. I probably could have easily incorporated that into yesterday's lesson, but I skipped over it on my list of things, so I apologize. Quick notes about the blob brush. Blob brush, I'm going to go ahead and change my color. You can see I changed the stroke. Notice I have no fill. Even if I put a fill on there, it doesn't affect the brush. Okay, so you can see it doesn't matter. Your outer stroke is always going to be what you need for that brush. Again, the only time you will see this come up is when you have a tool selected that uses it or you have your selection tool with a path selected that uses it. Okay, so when we go into that paintbrush, it is really important that you understand just like anything else, it has an outer stroke. If you click on the word, this is some ding ding new information. If you click on it, you actually have other options in there, which are going to start very quickly to really make a difference to you. You can choose how the end cap looks. I know some of them are kind of funny sounding. So you have a butt cap, you have a round cap, and you have a projecting cap. So that's how I can change that, um, that edge point on. Let's go. I'm having some struggles there. All right. Well, it does work. Okay, we're acting kind of funny right now. But anyway, let's go over to the next one, and then you guys can kind of play around with that. You've got your corner, so how things join up. You have a miter corner where you get like a squared off corner. You've got a round join where the edges are rounded. Great for like your 80s, like 80s themed things. Anything that might be like light, lively, and fun, you won't have true corners. It'll be a little bit rounded. And then this one, which is your bevel joint. Again, it'll be an angle at the end. It'll give you a completely different finish on that. Um, again, you will find some of these will work perhaps a little bit more. Let me make that bigger. I'm going to go ahead and just put a random shape in there. And you can actually see if I click off keyboard shortcut. You might want to start looking into those. I'll probably have some little um, tools for you to help. You've got V. If I click off of that, you can see, zoom in with Control Plus, you can see that I have, oh, I've moved too quick, sorry. I've got that bevel joint on there. Okay, or the, I'm sorry, the corner. If I go into um, the rounded, I go into square. Um, lots of important things. Aligning the stroke is the last one in here that we're really going to be thinking about right now in time. Aligning the stroke means my pathway, where is the stroke in relation to my pathway? In this case, it's centered. In this case, it is on the inside of my path. And in this case, it is on the outside of my path. So again, some really, really important things. If you need a perfect one by two inch rectangle, with an outer stroke of 10 points, you know you can confidently do that by changing around some of these functions, okay? So again, if I click on the word stroke, that little menu pops up and gives you all those wonderful options. I'm gonna zoom back out and we're gonna get back to that brush. As I come into that brush, I've got, I'm gonna change the color just so that you can see a bit of a difference to it. As I go into that brush, I do have options with changing. These are going to be very important, but you can see there's many more options, or hopefully you know that there's more options than what's listed here. You do, if you grab that bottom corner, you can actually pull that a little bit wider open, and you can go into your library as well. When you go into that library, you're going to have a bunch of possibilities in there. So if I'm looking at, like, I'm looking for arrows. I'm looking for some artistic, and I would love to do, like, a paintbrush edge. Let me see what that one looks like. There are my paintbrush edges. I can grab this guy, I can move him over, and I can say I'm going to start with this one. You'll see it gives you a little bit of like a funky dotted line. I'm going to do it again. You get like a little dotted line for that path. Once you let go of it, 
you can see that it gives you the effect of that particular paintbrush in there. Okay? So really, that's where we are with those. You get some really beautiful effects that could enhance your work quite a bit. So you want to make sure that you are aware in there um, that those are options. I also have my um, width profile that are things that I may find really helpful, really skinny start and a skinny end with a wider full full, um, full size in the middle. So again, think about what's going to work for you and utilize that wisely, okay? I am going to zoom out with control zero. I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm going to clear off my workspace because I'm gonna introduce you, oh, that's really cool. I had it selected when I pressed the brush profile and I didn't even realize it gave that effect onto my um, onto my box. I'm gonna go ahead, I just drew a line, or sorry, a box around everything. I hit the delete key on my keyboard. Don't forget, we definitely wanna utilize Control Z to undo things, especially while we're working. If we just wanna get rid of that last trope or a couple of things that we did, undo, undo, undo. All right, now, there is something that you're going to need for the next um, we'll call it exercise that you're going to do. Um, I was hoping to do this on a Tuesday because it was much more appropriate, but we, alas, are at Wednesday, and so be it. Um, we're going to have Taco Wednesday, okay? Um, you can see I put a little face on him. It's kind of cute, but I want you to learn the process to creating these kinds of shapes and how to use your paint brushes and your blob brush and something called your Pathfinder. The Pathfinder is what I use to create the shape. There are so many ways to create these shapes, but I do want you guys to realize I will be showing you sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three. Just know for every one way, there's probably many other ways of doing it. And if you have another way that works better for you, share it with me. I'd love to see your technique and your methods. But if I go back here, I'm going to start with that taco shape simply because um, that's what I use Pathfinder for. Okay, so I started with an ellipse. And I gave myself what looked like sort of two tacos piled one on top of each other. Like if I cut this in half, I'd have a great taco shape, okay? But I also wanted rounded corners. So now I have to figure my way through this. I could care less what the colors are right now. I'm actually going to just give it a little bit more of an outer stroke just so you can see it a little bit better on screen, okay? So the rounded corners, I actually decided to go into a rounded rectangle because Pathfinder, Pathfinder may not be located out here for you, but you can find it right in your Windows function. So if you go to your window menu, scroll all the way towards the bottom, notice there's a little arrow. If you press that arrow, you can go to the additional ones underneath there. There's tons of them, but we're looking for Pathfinder, okay? And if I bring up Pathfinder, what I want to show you guys is that Pathfinder has shape modes and it has Pathfinder. So if we look to this one, we have a unite function. And if I'm looking to unite different things, I could grab these, I could build them. I'm gonna to go to my selection tool. I'm gonna to select both of them and I could unite them and now they're one shape. It is one path. You can undo it, but later on, it's there. It's not like that exists, that line exists anymore, and I can't get it back. So that's been united. When I go here, I'm doing something called minus the front. So whichever one is in front, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give each a fill so that you can see. I'm going to give them sort of a distinctly different fill. So we can see that this one happens to be in front of the yellow. The red is in front of the yellow. So if I minus the front, I get that little like, you know, maybe Pac-Man with an overbite, okay? I'm going to control Z, undo. I'm going to come over here and I choose intersect. If you think about it, when two things intersect, that's where they cross over. And wherever these things cross over, that's what it's going to leave for me. So that's intersect. And then we have exclude, which means where those two pieces cross over, it's going to remove that as a usable shape. So I couldn't select this shape and fill that. That's now an empty void, okay? So those are the top row. That's the top row. Down here, there's additional ones, like here is divide. If I do divide, what I've done now is I've created one path here, one path here, 
and one pair here. So now it's three distinctly different shapes. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Three distinctly different shapes. Okay. If I go here, I'm trimming. When I trim, uh, I want us to kind of stay away from that right now. We don't need to worry too much about that. We can do merge, but again, if we're doing merge, we, we are going to use Unite right now. So a lot of these things we are not going to be using down in Pathfinder with the exception of maybe Divide. Okay? So again, we're going to focus on this top row and this first one here. So the rest of these you can mess around with, but if you don't quite grasp them right now, I don't want them to confuse you. I don't want them to make you feel uncomfortable in any way, shape, or form. Okay? So to create that taco shape, whoops. Sorry. Oh my goodness, I just messed everything up. Look at that. All right, there we go. To create that taco shape, I'm actually going to grab this rounded rectangle and I am going to stretch that so that it reaches from side to side. I might actually remove the fill. Remember to remove the fill. I can go ahead and use that first square with that red knot sort of angle to it. So I want to see over the top of this, I want to see that it looks like um, it looks like a taco. It's got like those little rounded corners. It fits really well. I might zoom in a little bit. I might pull this out just a little because I had a little bit of a flat edge over there. Get picky. Okay, so you really want to be picky with that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this. Before I do that though, don't forget this pathway I can right click, I can arrange, and I could bring that to the front. I can make sure it's there. I'm going to grab both of them and I'm going to go right over here and I'm going to minus the thing in the front. And oh, nope, wrong one. I want to bring this one to the front. Arrange, bring to front, grab them both. Oh, wait a minute. Acting funny right now. What's going on? I'm messing up. No, I'm totally messing this up. What am I doing? Oh, no, you know what I did? I'm sorry. I actually divided it out, and then I just deleted. My goodness, we're up. Oh. I'm really struggling this morning. My apologies. I'm going to ungroup it after I divided it. Grab that piece and hit delete. Grab that piece, hit delete. And then these pieces here, I shouldn't have had that in there. So what you can do is you can use your eraser and you can sort of alter that a little bit. Obviously make it a little bit better. Mine was not very clean. I'm going to have to figure out why mine gave that little extra at the bottom. So again, I'm looking at the time. I only have two minutes, so I'm going to have to move back to this guy. If it goes wrong, undo it. Refigure your, your um, outlines. And actually, maybe I have too much of a stroke on there. Maybe I need to actually decrease that stroke so that I can see that they fit in a little bit better. Divide it, right click, ungroup it, and then delete what you don't want. Okay? So as I go back to this guy, I then took and I made with that brush tool or with the blob brush, whichever one you prefer, I actually made the little fillings. So I went through and I made the fillings. Don't forget right bracket. I got a larger brush. You can see I have a five-point oval just to give it some variety. Went over the top. I changed the color, and I had some lettuce. And then I went through, and I made some cheese. I again, made the brush a little smaller with my bracket key. And kind of keep going with that. If I move my little taco face, you're going to see that he has all of his toppings underneath. I move this taco shell forward right above those things. And then that little white line is my outer stroke. So I chose to give him a white outer stroke so that there was a little bit of gap between him and the filling itself. I could actually decrease it. I could change the color. And then I started building a face. Whether you have a face or not or texture on your tortilla, whatever it is, I want you to practice using that either blob and or paintbrush and then also using the Pathfinder, specifically looking at this divide function to get your taco shell cut in half, and then ungrouping those things, deleting the parts you don't want, and then working on the remaining portions.